Hi guys, it's Judith from the Intuitive Body Foodie Network and I'm dedicating today's video to Go Gurr. <laughs> Interesting handle. Uh, who asks, is it possible to ferment dry seaweed? The kind sold in Asian stores uh, shaped like fettuccine. It absolutely is and because uh, seaweed is rich in trace minerals and vitamins uh, not to mention potassium and calcium and what else have we got here uh, and iron so it's 40 percent 40 percent potassium 10 percent calcium and two percent iron in a cup of seaweed so yeah definitely that would increase those percentages and make all the other nutrients much more bioavailable including the natural iodine right that you get in uh, seaweed Today I'm going to show you a variety of different seaweeds, both fresh and this dried, dehydrated. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it and then I'm actually going to show you how to ferment. So come, because there's a whole process involved. Come and let me show you how to do all this. The one that Goger is referring to is this. It's the long uh, stems that they've shredded. I have both dried and refrigerated and you'll notice all the salt that comes in this is the salt that they pack it in to keep it fresh don't forget seaweed lives in salt water another one that I have is kelp and these are lightly salted and again I buy these fresh so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse all the salt off of these and then I'm going to add some spring water and let them soak for so I have them full of water and now I'll just let them soak when you soak fresh seaweed, uh, it helps to get rid of a lot of that excess salt, which is why sometimes I'll just do this. And that's why I may change this water in 10 or 15 minutes and then soak it for another 10 or 15 minutes in a fresh solution of water. Sorry, this water is excessively salty. Although I might be tempted to want to reserve this and use it on my garden or in my compost, it just has far too much salt. When you have far too much salt in your compost or in your garden, it affects the other nutrients. So I would definitely not recommend that you use this for that purpose. If you have access to fresh seaweed, you'd still want to rinse it However, because it's not packed in the same amount of salt that it would be if you bought it in a package at the store, you can then use the water and you can add that to your gardens because it won't be as salty. I've just taken the first batch of water out of this. So it was soaking for a good 10 minutes and now I'm going to just put it in a new batch of water to soak again. The other thing you can do with the reserve water that's full of salt is you can use that after the seaweed is out. You can use that water for soups and stews. So you can reserve it for cooking. Just don't add it to your garden or your compost. The reason I don't is because I truly don't know what kind of salt they use to pack this in. All I know is that it's, it's very cakey-like and my body's just like, no, I don't want that. So typically what I do is I just throw it down the sink. The one that I bought fresh, I literally picked it up with tongs out of a bin and put it in a bag, has less salt, so it's already ready. And you'll know it's ready by when you take it out and taste it, it won't be as salty. And what does it taste like? Mm, nothing really. I guess a little bit like the ocean. <laughs> um, it's crunchy. This one, let's test it. This one you want to rip it into strands. This one has a obviously more salty taste because it was packed in so much salt. So if you feel like if it's too salty and you want to rinse it two or three more times, there's no limit to how much you can rinse your seaweed. Let's just try this. I actually like that, so for me, this is ready to strain. When it comes to actually fermenting seaweed, I hope this is going to make sense to you, but salt water will not ferment seaweed because seaweed is naturally acclimatized to salt water. In other words, that's its natural habitat. 
So that's not going to ferment it. So saltwater brine is not going to work when you ferment seaweed. So for that reason, you have to use a starter. It can be rejuvelac, any sort of vegetable juice from your fermented vegetables, whether you use carrots or cabbage or cucumbers or celery, whatever. So some sort of what I call veggie brine, fermented whey, water kefir, raw apple cider vinegar, providing that it's less than 21 days old after you've removed the apples. Some sort of starter, just not salt water because it's, it's, it's natural habitat. I'm going to actually combine these two seaweeds. I have a cucumber brine that I'm going to use. So this is cucumbers done in garlic and dill. And yes, it's 100% pure starter and leave a little bit of head space, and it's that simple. That's if you're using fresh. Now, if you're using dried, you might be tempted to put this directly into your vegetable brine or whatever starter you, it is that you choose, but know that this will swell. That's why it's best to soak this in water first, get it fully hydrated, and then put it in a brine or whatever starter of your choosing. Here's some of that wakame that I soaked for 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. And I think I only used about two cups and this has made eight cups. So it's a nice bright green, easy to tear. And it's delicious just like this. That said, this water that I used to soak the wakame in this has no salt in it. So now I can use this on my house plants. I can give this to my cats if I want to because it's infused with vitamins and minerals and there's no salt in it at all. And I can also put it on my compost, put it out on my, directly into my uh, flower beds or my vegetable garden. So I've transferred the wakame into this one gallon vessel and I have all natural whole food vitamin I took an entire bottle of whole food vitamins and added them to kraut juice. So this is a high potency multivitamin that every day I can come in and I can take a little scoop and get my vitamins. Now that said, I'm actually going to use this. I'm gonna dilute it because this is highly concentrated. My instinct is saying three quarters to a quarter, so I think that's what I'll do. You don't need to weigh seaweed down. You can if you want. I almost never do. It's always going to rise to the top. That's why I say you don't, with, when, in my personal experience, I've never had to weigh seaweed down. It's been fine. Then just put a lid over top of it and leave it to ferment. Now something I have not shared in past, I don't think any time I've ever shared this. This wakame, after you've rehydrated it by simply soaking it in water, you can actually add wakame to virtually any vegetable that you ferment, and it will add vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals to your brine and to whatever it is that you're fermenting. I like to put wakame in with my pickles. Definitely add it to kraut, so don't um, hesitate if you're trying to get iodine and extra vitamins and minerals into your foods, don't hesitate to add any type of seaweed, whether it's wakame or kelp or dulse or, or any seaweed into your fermented foods. And there you have it. Two types of seaweed that we are fermenting in these particular ones in brine. Like I said, you can use rejuvelac, water kefir, fermented whey, the whey from your yogurt, raw apple cider vinegar, etc. Thanks for watching this video and thank you Gogur for the prompt. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed creating it and until I see you in future videos showing you the recipes that I make with this and how I eat fermented foods in a day with this, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.